So in this video, I'm going to be predicting AL East Division standings for the 2023 MLB season uh, as a part of my 2023 MLB prediction series here on this channel. So uh, as always, this is just my opinion. Your opinion on who you think is going to win the AL East Division might be completely different. That is 100% okay. Uh, all I ask is that you guys leave your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section of this video in a respectful way. Uh, these videos are supposed to be fun um, predictions for the upcoming MLB season. So as always, like I said before, I'll leave your thoughts down below in the comment section of this video and I'll get right into it. So starting off at number five, I'm going to say the Boston Red Sox are going to finish last in the AL East division uh, for the 2023 MLB season. Uh, I actually do think there's a case you can make for all five uh, of the teams in this division uh, for being placed one through five. Um, I do think this division is fairly competitive for the most part. There's not really any bottom feeders, uh, in my opinion, uh, in the AL East division for the 2023 MLB season. But I do have to predict a team that's going to be last place. Uh, and I do think as of right now, it's probably the Boston Red Sox. Now, the Boston Red Sox, in my opinion, just didn't really do anything this offseason to make their team significantly better. Um, they lost, uh, you know, their shortstop, their star shortstop, uh, you know, Xander Bogarts to the San Diego Padres um, in free agency. So that doesn't help their team by any means. Um, they did lose Trevor Story due to injury. Uh, so that hurts. Also, um, they were able to bring back Raphael Devers, but it's not really a new addition, obviously, because they're just bringing them back. They also lost J.D. Martinez, uh, but basically replaced them with Justin Turner. So that's a little bit of addition by subtraction there um, in regards to uh, pitching. Other than signing Corey Kluber, they didn't really do much as well to get better. In my opinion, sure, they got Kenley Jansen um, and they got Chris Martin also. So uh, they did get a little bit better, I guess, in free agency. Um, they did sign Julie Rodriguez as well. So I guess they did make some moves. Uh, they did make some moves in regards to their bullpen. So I guess that looks a little bit more improved, um, which is good, I guess, for 2023. But I just don't think this team has the firepower uh, for the 2023 MLB season. You know, they did sign Masataka Yoshida, uh, international prospect. So hopefully he can perform uh, and be the player that everyone thought he was going to be um, this offseason. So that could be a nice move there, I guess. Um, they do have, you know, Kike Hernandez, who's a solid player. Um, Rafael Devers, as I mentioned before. Um, Justin Turner, uh, Alex Verdugo. But other than that, it's not a fantastic looking group uh, in regards to position players um, for the Red Sox in 2023. Now their starting rotation isn't actually that terrible. Um, Chris Sale, Corey Kluber, um, Nick Pavetta, James Paxton, Garrett Whitlock. That's a projected rotation as of right now. So that could potentially be something I guess in 2023. Um, but I don't know. I'm just not super high on this Red Sox team, um, for 2023. So I think as of right now, just by process of elimination um, and the fact that I do have to chop one team off um, for this division. I think the Red Sox are going to be that team. Um, so as of right now, yeah, they're my number five team. Am I confident about it? Not really, uh, but I do think, in my opinion, the worst team in this division as of right now, uh, heading into 2023. So at number four on my list for the 2023 MLB season uh, in regards to American League East predictions, uh, I think I have to have the Baltimore Orioles sort of like the Red Sox. The Orioles just didn't really do enough, in my opinion, uh, to make themselves that much better and to really make up any ground in their division uh, for the 2023 season. Now, the Orioles actually had a pretty solid year um, in 2023. 2022 and are hoping to build off that for 2023 and there was a lot of talk and speculation about um, the Orioles going after some of the top free agents available um, this offseason they were linked to guys like Carlos Correa uh, they were linked to guys like Trey Turner you know all the top shortstops were linked to the Orioles uh, in one way or another none of which ended up going there um, none of the top starting pitchers went there either so um, in regards to free agency the Orioles sort of struck out on some of the big players they were linked to heading into the year uh, now they did make that trade with the Mariners uh, or sorry, they did sign um, Adam Frazier in free agency from the Mariner, uh, Mariners. So that's a, you know, a good addition there. Um, they do have another year of Adley Rushman. Um, they do have some, you know, other star players as well that are young. Uh, Gunnar Henderson, for example. Um, Cedric Mullins is coming back, obviously. So I like this team, you know, Ryan Mountcastle, uh, Anthony Santander. So this team actually is going to be pretty fun to watch in 2023. And I think everyone's rooting for the Orioles to get back into that playoff conversation. Uh, and they are one of those younger teams that um, does have potential and could be on the rise for 2023. So, you know, would it surprise me if this team takes a step uh, and competes for a wild card spot next year? Absolutely not. I fully expect them to be in that conversation um, throughout the entire 2023 season. 
I just don't think this team made any significant moves, um, in my opinion, to make this team better um, for the 2023 year. Now, uh, they did sign Kyle Gibson from the Philadelphia Phillies in free agency, uh, but he's 35 years old. I'm not really too sure how that's going to look for 2023. Um, other than that, um, they did you know add a couple arms, I guess, to their bullpen, but it just doesn't look like the Orioles are going to take that step, in my opinion, uh, unless some of their young guys perform their projected stats, I guess. That's the only real way I think that this team jumps uh, the three teams that I haven't mentioned in this video so far. So uh, I think as of right now, I have the Orioles as my number four team uh, just because they didn't really make that big splash. I think they were trying to in free agency, uh, but this team could be surprising in 2023. Uh, and it would not shock me by any means um, if they are better than what I think. So uh, at number four, I have the Baltimore Orioles. So at number three, I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, the Rays didn't really do anything significant in free agency as well. Um, they did, I guess, sign Zach Eflin to a pretty, you know, reasonable contract. I think it was actually the biggest contract given out in Rays history in free agency. Now, I could be wrong about that, but I think that's what I saw um, in regards to them. So uh, the Rays are really solid, though. Like, this team's really deep. They have, a, you know, a great pitching staff, a great bullpen, in my opinion. Um, they have some, you know, studs up front um, in regards to position players, but this team just didn't make anything significant. You know how the you know you know how the Rays operate. Um, they're a small market team, so they tend to lose players year after year just due to the fact that they're not able to afford all these guys. Um, but in 2023, you know they have Yandy Diaz. If Wander Franco could stay healthy um, and live up to his contract, he could be a star player. Um, Randy Rosarena, obviously, you know, is a stud. Brandon Lau, um, you know. This team's not terrible. Um, if they can stay healthy, I like their you know, projected lineup up front. It's not terrible um, in regards to their starting rotation. Um, obviously, they have Shane McClanahan. He's a star. Um, you know, Tyler Glass now, Drew Rasmussen, as I mentioned before, Zach Eflin uh, from the Philadelphia Phillies. So um, there shouldn't be no question marks with the starting rotation this year. Should be one of the best in all of baseball once again. Um, and the Braves sort of how they are, sorry, not the Braves, how the Rays operate their bullpen. Um, they do have some stars in their bullpen also. So I really do think this team uh, should be in the wildcard conversation once again uh, for the 2023 season. Uh, I do have them slightly ahead of Baltimore and Boston. Now, could they be worse? Absolutely. Uh, I think this team's going to really depend on health um, and the emergence of guys like Wander Franco, for example. So uh, we'll see what happens there. But uh, yeah, as of right now, the, the Rays are sort of just middle of the pack for the AL East, in my opinion. Uh, and that's why I have them at number three on this list for the American League East in 2023. Now I'm fully prepared to take some heat for this pick, but I actually have the New York Yankees at number two um, for the American League East division uh, for the 2023 season. I know a lot of Yankees fans watch this channel, so I really apologize, but just hear me out for right now uh, before you guys get mad at me in the comment section of this video. You know, could the Yankees be the best team in the division next year? 100%. Um, if they trade for Brian Reynolds, this team will be the best team in the division next year. I guarantee that. But as of right now, they just have haven't made that big splash in regards to um, position players that I think you know Yankee fans are hoping for, uh, whether that was going to be in free agency or in the trade market, for example, to really push them ahead of the team I'm going to talk about pretty shortly um, as the number one team in this division, in my opinion. But the Yankees are going to be tremendous once again. Um, bringing back Aaron Judge was huge for this team. Um, that would have been a gigantic loss, but they were able to bring him back, which is good. Uh, but other than that, they haven't really done anything uh, to improve on their team from last year. It looks pretty similar uh, to last year in regards to their position players up front. Um, you know, Glaber Torres, Aaron Judge, Anthony Rizzo, Stanton. They still have Josh Donaldson as their third baseman. Um, Cabrera is their projected starting left fielder. Uh, Bader, if Peraza can have a good year, player for them. Um, Trevino as their catcher. So other than that... It hasn't been a fantastic offseason in regards to acquiring new talent. Like, they haven't made that Brian Reynolds trade that I think Yankees fans are hoping for. They still very well could, and as I mentioned before, if they do, they're probably my number one team. But until that happens, I have to have them at number two um, in this video. Now, I love their rotation. I love their rotation. You know, Garrett Cole, Carlos Rodon, Severino, Cortez. That is arguably the best you know, top four guys in a rotation in the league you can make the argument for. So uh, that's pretty impressive there. Now with the Montez injury, um, like could, you know, they go for a trade? Could they sign someone else? I guess only time will tell. That's a big, that's a pretty big loss for them there. Um, I like this bullpen. It's nothing special, but it's pretty solid regardless. Um, but I think until the Yankees make a big splash, you know, most notably in their outfield, um, you know, maybe a Brian Reynolds trade, for example, 
I have to have them at number two on this list because they just didn't do enough, in my opinion, to get better externally um, and are really hoping on guys like Oswaldo Cabrera, for example, uh, and Oswald Peraza, uh, as long as guys like, you know, as well as guys like Aaron Judge to repeat what they did last year um, in order to have success. I love the rotation. Um, I like their team. I just don't have them at number one, in my opinion. So number two, I have the New York Yankees, which by default, if you're following along, which obviously you guys are, uh, the Toronto Blue Jays are my number one team for the 2023 season. Now, I know the Blue Jays were projected to be a top team in baseball last year. It wasn't really the case. Um, you can blame injuries. You can also blame their pitching uh, as sort of the main downfall for their team last year. And I also am a Blue Jays fan, so I could be a little bit biased in this, but I'm trying to make this as objective as possible, uh, not biased by any means. I just like what the Blue Jays have done, what the Blue Jays did this offseason. Uh, the trade of Dalton Varsho, I think, could be a, an awesome trade for this team. A player that was on the radar for the Yankees, for example. Um, I love Dalton Varsho uh, playing in the field. I love him being left-handed bat. I love him, you know, having catcher experience there. I love the addition of Dalton Bar show for the 2023 MLB season. I also love the addition of Brandon Belt. Brandon Belt brings World Series championship experience. He's a left-handed bat also, uh, someone that can be, if he is healthy, uh, a player that can be very sneaky and play well above uh, what we signed him for in free agency. Also, too, uh, bringing back with Merrifield for a full year. Uh, if Kevin Kiermaier can stay healthy, that's a big question mark. Um, he's also a left-handed bat that can play tremendous defense in center field. Um, I really like this team. I really like this one through nine lineup uh, for the Toronto Blue Jays. You know, George Springer, Bo Bichette, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Alejandro Kirk, Dalton Varsho, Matt Chapman, Brandon Belt, Whit Merrifield, Kevin Kiermaier. That's pretty impressive if you ask me and look at their bench. A guy like Danny Jansen could fetch back maybe an arm in their rotation, for example, if they want to go ahead and trade him. Uh, they have Santiago Espinal, who could probably do the exact same thing. Kevin Biggio. So I think offensively, the Blue Jays are looking pretty good and pretty primed uh, for another tremendous year offensively in 2023 if this group can stay healthy. Now, I think their pitching is still a little bit of a question mark if I'm being realistic here. Um, they did, you know, trade for Eric Swanson and that's the Oscar Hernandez trade with the Mariners. So um, that can hopefully be a nice player in their bullpen. Um, they have Yimi Garcia once again, you know, Anthony Bass, um, you know, they have Jordan Romano once again as their closer. I think the bullpen got a little bit better. It still could be a little bit better also, in my opinion. Um, their starting rotation got a little bit better also. They still could use a number five pitcher, in my opinion, uh, with currently, uh, you know, Yusei Kikuchi as their projected number five. So I think they could use an upgrade there. But, you know, Alec Manoa could be a Cy Young candidate. Kevin Gosman, Jose Barrios, the addition of Chris Bassett I like a lot too. So uh, the Blue Jays actually had a sneaky good offseason, in my opinion, um, addressing starting pitching. Also adding, you know, some left-handed bats to their lineup offensively. I have some high hopes for the Blue Jays in 2023, uh, and that's why they're my, you know, that's why the, well, that's why uh, they are my number one team uh, in the American League East for the 2023 MLB season. So that's going to be it in regards to my AL East division standing predictions uh, for the 2023 MLB season. As I mentioned before, uh, please be respectful in the comment section of this video. This is just my opinion. Uh, if you guys disagree, that's 100% okay. Just leave your thoughts down below. As always, um, thanks again for watching, and see you in the next one.